finding problems that's easy. They exist in every community. I'm Terry Springs, your host. We're looking deeper, and we are talking solutions, finding out how we all can make a difference. Now on Talking Solutions, one of my favorite guests, Don Miller from Hope Link. Thanks for coming back in. Thanks, Terry, and you're my favorite host, if I can say that. You are very kind. <laughs> and we're Facebook friends, and I'm proud of that, too, because it gives me a lot of information about what's happening at Hope Link. And it's always good to be able to talk to people outside of our circle at Hope Link and tell them what's going on, because so many things that happen at Hope Link really affect a much larger scale of population. And we've done a number of things since we've last spoken. One of the things that we did recently, we concluded our VITA program. Tax VITA. preparation. Yes, is our volunteer income tax preparation assistance. We've done it, my goodness, since probably 2004, led by the wonderful Kathy Matson, who was here with us last year. And this year, the program processed more than 13% more returns than last year. Wow. And nearly $1 million generated right back into the commerce community. We love the program being based at Hope Link. They love being at Hope Link because they all get their little private offices. I guess other locations, they're very crammed. There's 17 different VITA sites around town and Hope Link produces a lot of the returns that are filed and a lot of the income that is returned back in the community. Well, the income cap is $58,000 annually or mm-hmm. less. Most of the people I know here in Clark County, a lot of my friends, coworkers, neighbors, they all could have gotten the free income tax tax preparation services mm-hmm. that are available to anyone. I understand if you've got a lot of assets and something a little more complicated, but people making under $58,000 this year and needing to file taxes, they're spending two to $500 to get that whole return developed and put into the mail. That's just eating away at anything they might get back. But you know, when all of our VITA volunteers get together and give up weekend after weekend after weekend after weekend from the end of January through just recently, they processed, I think it was 795, almost 800 tax returns, and all of them returned nearly a million dollars. I think it was $909,499 or something like that. Absolutely free. We have passed the tax deadline for this year, but for next year, keep it in mind. But what's most important about this is not that it's just a free service that HopeLink offers to the community each year, but when people who are clients of HopeLink, low-income clients, get their tax returns back, we can case manage them into best use of those monies by saving or putting it into some kind of bank account, starting a bank account. Many have never have started one. We have all kinds of different case management efforts that go into helping a lot of these people manage the money well and not just go spend it on a big screen TV. And know? that is the first instinct. We're going to take that vacation or I want to buy something I haven't been able to afford for a long time. No way is that the best use of the funds. Yeah. A lot of people just don't know that they could do something or they don't think like that. They just think of all the bills they have to pay and so we'll pay off these or they think of treating themselves because life has been so difficult. So our case managers get in with these people and help them to make best decisions so that they have something to be a safety net or they are paying off the right bills or getting into snowballing and paying off their bills. So we love the VITA program. It's worked really well for us. Kathy does a great job. Tax season is over and we're all happy about that, I'm sure. Yay, but it'll be back around. It always is. (laughs) Don Miller is with us today from Hope Link of Southern Nevada. Don, over the past several years, we've been talking Mm. about the efforts of the charity. It just keeps growing because it's doing such great work. Yes, Hope Link started about 27, 28 years ago out of the backseat of a Chevy, basically, by some people in Henderson who said something needs to be done to help some people out here. Now we have 11 employees. We are managing so many people being housed, and there's news on the horizon that we are going to grow significantly within the next few months because we are the number one private nonprofit housing provider in Nevada. Which is a huge problem. It's a huge problem, but it's also a great opportunity. HopeLink has become recognized as a leader in the field of being able to put together housing programs that get more people housed more efficiently. And one of our directors there does some great work, Danny Sparks, in managing the whole program. She's got a whole staff underneath her. But so many people in the state of Nevada, municipalities, are coming to us saying, you've got some very, very successful housing programs. We want to suggest giving you more money to be able to do more the same. So there's some nice things on the horizon. I suppose that next quarter when I come back and talk with you, I'll have some big news. You always have some kind of growth being experienced by HopeLink because you're doing great work. We do excellent work and we have 
excellent people working for us with great hearts and passion for our purpose and mission, too. When you're talking about housing, though, just recently there's been some horrible news that's come out about where Nevada ranks on the affordable housing scale. I wanted to share something with you that pertains to the housing crisis as it is, but also to the people who are near and dear to me and my heart personally, which are the senior citizens. Because that's your area of expertise with HopeLink. Yeah, I've been working five years as senior services manager, and I work with hundreds and thousands of senior citizens who are very, very, very low income, trying to keep them above board and keep them afloat. Our city is now the nation's worst provider of affordable housing, only having 12 affordable living units available per 100 households categorically classified as extremely low income. Seniors comprise over a quarter to almost a half of these households, and senior communities are at capacity with waiting lists up to two years and rents elevating well beyond the thresholds of fixed income affordability. Seniors remain stuck where they live, paying higher and higher rents at the expense of food and medicine and utilities and other necessities, having no physical nor monetary means to absorb the effort or the cost of moving to lower rent residences, even if they were available. So seniors, they're priced out of apartments beyond their capacity to pay, and they're soon evicted with a black mark on their record, making it virtually impossible to rent anywhere again. Mm. Housing programs which exist to provide the rent subsidies to the lowest income seniors are backed up two years for applications and then another two years for placement. The situation is not improving. So here they are, the seniors with few remaining possessions and few remaining options. They resort to the high price weeklies and then the money runs out. And then by necessity, it sends them back to capacity homeless shelters at their age, abandoned cars or the streets. And the fortunate few that can rent rooms from strangers on Craigslist or something, becoming easy marks for cons, theft, and crime. And for all of them, the options dissipate eventually, cycling them back to the shelters and streets they fought so hard to avoid. Most of them are like 70 to 95 with progressive health conditions, few if any basic computer skills to navigate the minimal resources that are out there, and really no available or surviving family. A lost, neglected, and unemployable generation with no remaining resources and no way of generating additional income. And with no remaining resources, transportation, or meaningful connections, the lucky ones spend their final days lost on the streets or in abusive nursing homes while the remainder end up in our mortuaries. It's a very sad situation. But Terry, this is the actual real life progression of old age for so many elderly. You or our listeners here will never, ever meet. Heartbreaking. Yeah, it is. And it's every single day. I mentioned a few minutes ago that we are Facebook friends and you're always putting out information regarding HopeLink and what you do with seniors and telling amazing stories about how you're able to lift someone up and give them something that they hadn't had access to. But the one that I saw from you just a few days ago talked about your Tuesday outreach that you do with seniors. And I believe the little video clip said that same morning you'd already seen at least two dozen different seniors. You do such a beautiful job, but how hard is it to have this endless stream of people, especially seniors with your area of expertise, who just keep coming? They need some help. Well, we know that the poor we will have with us always. That's the truth. My background is a marriage and family therapist. You learn early on in your profession that you can't take the stuff with you. You can't take it home with you. You hear some tragic stories and you deal with it there, but then you have to have a life apart from that. And that's always difficult to do, but you learn to manage that. But yes, that story you're referring to that I wrote, that one morning at a single community, 25 people came in with various different crises, small to large. And what he just pointed out to me is these people, their situation is getting worse worse and worse and worse, and there's nothing out there to help them. There's nothing except people like me and HopeLink. There's no solution to their problem. Municipalities aren't building new habitats or homes or affordable housing because that kind of is a blight on the city. You talk to one city and they say, well, go to the other city and see if they'll do it. But these people are lovely, lovely people, but they are neglected. Many, many, many of them are people who come via their family and say, here, just retire in Vegas. It's a nice place and the weather's always warm and you'll make friends and you'll play bingo and goodbye. And that's the last they hear. And so they're alone, lonely, trying to make some friends, trying to make some connections and trying to just get by. 
But fortunately, Hopelink is there to manage their situation. If they have the courage to come to us, and God knows I go out there and try to get them to come to me and share their story with me, we can usually increase their income by 20% just at the start, just by plugging in income supports and other resources that we're aware of. That's a good part of it. But yes, Terry, it's a sad story all around, but you know what? You can't just be burdened with the sadness. You got to look at things that you can do and look at the hope and instill a little bit of hope in these people. That's why they come to us. It's called Hope Link. And that's what we try to instill in them. Well, I'm sure you get to celebrate each one that you're able to assist in some way and make their life better. Yeah. You know what? That makes going home and going to bed wonderful. When I end my week and I go for the weekend, it's always so special to be able to end it on a high note with something positive having happened. We're talking with Don Miller from Hopelink of Southern Nevada today on Talking Solutions. You and I talk so often about the senior population that you are so deeply involved in assisting, but that is far from the extent of Hopelink of Southern Nevada yes, services. Yes, it is. We kind of get off on this tangent of seniors because that's kind of what I do and that's where my heart is and all. But Hopelink is a much bigger scope. Hopelink manages people who are families, like working families just living on the edge, single mothers, victims of domestic violence, victims of sex trafficking. We work with CPS on low-level cases to try to help families reunite and get incorporated. So there's a number of things there. We have divisions for housing, as I said before, our senior program, and many other things that are on the horizon. So really, we get sidetracked into what my heart is all about and don't pay enough attention to what other things we're doing. For instance, we have started an open house every month. Last month was an open house. On a rainy day, people would come and get food and then we'd talk with them. And the food delivery that was to come was like bottles of water, bar of soap and tampons or something like that. Well, that's not a lot of <laughs> not food. Not much, no. <laughs> Hydration is really yeah. important, but... So despite the rainy day and despite that, we had 100 people come in and made a number of appointments for these people for evaluation for our free services that we can offer. And so we're expecting a lot more. Our next one is Wednesday, May 8th, and it's 8 a.m. to noon at Hope Link. And you can find where we're at at linktohope.org. That's link, L-I-N-K, the number two, hope.org. We're expecting double that this time. Well, this monthly open house, people can find out about all the services. You guys are already getting ready to help kids going back to school. They're not even out of school yet. (laughs) And we are going back to school because back to school is a huge effort that we put on every year. This year, we're going out to all the schools in our FRC jurisdiction area. And we're saying, hey, here's what we do. You want to put something in the kid's backpack so when they go home, if they qualify, the parents can call. We can get them set up. Because what we do is supply them with two sets of clothes or two complete new uniforms, depending on what their school requires. All the undergarments, backpacks, supplies, you name it. All they need is the teacher. Our back-to-school program is on now for people who live in the jurisdiction zip codes that we serve, which would be all of the Henderson zip codes. And I think there's 89122, 89123, and 89183 zip codes of Las Vegas that we can provide for. What about Boulder City? Boulder City, Henderson, and... 89005? Uh, 005, that's like all of Boulder City. We provide for people who are certified low-income qualifying that way and we can help their kids. They just need to call us and make an appointment or come by. We have a lot of people that we serve. In fact, last year alone, we served 12,000 people completely unduplicated. That's almost the population of Boulder City. And a lot of those people come in once again so they can sign their kids up for back to school. It takes a big burden off the parents who are just trying to get by and having to go get school clothes and backpacks and shoes and all that kind of stuff for their kids for school is a real burden. And so we help to lift that burden. One of the things you always ask is, is what can we do to help? Yes. We are looking for sponsors for some of these students. We do all the shopping, all the packaging, everything, but it costs us about $100 per student to equip them to the hilt for all these things. So anything our listeners out there would like to donate towards this effort to equipping some of these students for school would be a real blessing for us. And that's always done at our website, which is link the number two hope.org backslash donate. Anything you can contribute would be wonderful. You know that I'm going to have the links and everything on our Talking Solutions Facebook yes, page, do. along with the podcast of our discussion today. Don, this back to school program that you have for these kids, wardrobe, the underwear, all the things that they need to walk into school. And for families, it's very rare that you have just one child. A lot of times it's a few children mm-hmm. that all need these services. Yep. 
but put him into school dressed and ready to go and prepared to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, the Clark County School District just had that study. They published 70% of children in the school district here in Clark County, their primary concern is getting bullied. And you know what? When you're not wearing the most up-to-date shoes, you don't have clothes that fit, or you're wearing high waters or something like that, or don't have a backpack or don't have the supplies, kids will make fun of everything. So we like to think that sponsoring a child and getting them equipped will make those stats go down as well. Wow, that would make you feel so good if you had the resources to sponsor a child for ballpark 100 bucks. Yep, we'll take anything though. Sure, anything you can contribute. A lot of groups have contacted me and said, we would like our church group and a couple business groups to be able to take on a number of kids and sponsor them. And they're actually going to do the shopping, which is wonderful. We're open to anything as long as we can get these kids equipped. Great idea. Get the church or your organization involved in something like that. Yeah. It is link the number two hope dot org slash donate. Oh, no. mm-hmm. We have so many educational stumbling blocks here in Nevada mm-hmm. for kids to achieve. This is one small one that we could really be assisting. And that makes a huge difference too. Not just for the impoverished community, but the families that we serve many times are the working families who are busting their butt to get out there and make a living to provide for their families just coming up short. So we work with the parents and by taking care of the kids for school, it takes that burden off them. You know, to help the parents, we offer a number of classes every month, financial independence classes or financial management classes. A lot of these families don't know how to do budgets. They didn't grow up in families that taught them. So we help them learn to prepare budgets or to live more frugally. We actually have a couponing class. It's couponing and meal prep. We have a Love and Logic, which is a parenting class that uses basic skills on managing your kids so that you get a more cooperative household. And then I'll be teaching a class called the Seven Deadly Seniors sins. A one-time class on May 16th at Hope Link, helping seniors identify the top seven things that if they could change, could change their life. But I'm not going to give you any hints right now. I'm wondering. (laughs) I'm thinking May 16th. But anyways, we teach how to be better parents, how to be better financial managers of their household, and we take care of the kids at the same time. So really, when you talk about Hope Link, it is holistic. We have so many audiences that we serve, seniors, parents and families and kids Mm -hmm. and all the way through. It's pretty obvious. Hope Link of Southern Nevada does help people of all age groups in Mm -hmm. all different situations throughout the valley. Also recognized for the excellence of the service that you provide. I know we've had plans on our calendar to sit down and talk about Hope Link for a while. And when we were first discussing it, you were anticipating us going into the hot weather for the summer, concerns about seniors being able to handle energy bills just to be able to survive the summer yeah. temperatures that we encounter. It's funny you should say that because it kind of segues into what I was going to speak on next. In fact, today we are delivering 20,000 pounds of food to the doors of senior citizens at 17 different complexes. I've got a troop of about 45 volunteers out there right now. I'm looking at my phone, waiting for messages to come in to make sure everything's good. We have a senior pantry we just installed, which is a giant food pantry full of high protein items and diabetic friendly items, all for senior citizens exclusively. It's for anybody who comes by for that. So what we have going on today with the food delivery and with the food pantry started out actually five years ago when I was dealing with the senior citizens on their turf, realizing many of them didn't have a lot of the resources available that they were entitled to. There are certain income supports the Department of Welfare gives for certain income levels, almost all of which belong to senior citizens. But somebody needed to bring that message to them because they don't have computers to find this out. So I just started a food delivery program for one day, got all the seniors in from that community, and then signed them all up for energy assistance, food stamps, and for a Medicaid Part B payment so they don't have that taken out of their check. Changed the world for many of these senior citizens. So how this food program expanded was we thought this has been such a game changer for so many of these seniors. We're going to expand it to three properties. Then we went on six, nine, and now we're at 17 different properties. So we've got the ears of the seniors. We're keeping regular their tabs on them, making sure they have all those income supports that they're due and entitled to, that's going to help significantly when the summer comes and they now have an energy assistance award of four, five, six hundred dollars, which I told them not to use earlier in the year. So they're going to have it intact for when the summer months come. Wow. So you start off by delivering food. Everybody goes, yeah, I could use some of that. Mm -hmm. And you go, by the way, while you're here, yes, 
<laughs> it's a strategy. It's it the works. strategy. You've got all these other programs. Mm-hmm. As long as I've got your attention and you're already here, mm-hmm. let's talk about the other things right. that Hope Link can well, do. Well, senior hunger is such a huge issue right now. Lisa Segler from Three Square, God bless her, she's managing this entire program. I'm working with her and we have a senior hunger task force committee. All this food being delivered and everything, it all starts as a strategy. The initial offering of the food was honestly and truly bait. Something that I knew that they needed, they would come out for. So I could at least make the introductions and then introduce them to all the services they might be entitled to. It's really tasty bait. Yeah, tasty bait. But they needed food. And so we thought, well, let's get some food out there for them. They'll come. It gives us an opportunity to introduce HopeLink services to them and then get them into case management. And so many of these people now are living entirely different lives. Our slogan is change their normal. That's the hope link. And you know what? I wouldn't continue working there for now going on my sixth year if I didn't believe that was true. Do you have any estimate on how many thousands of people, especially seniors, that you've been able to help with hope link over these years? Seniors alone? Goodness. I think seniors make up about 25 to 35 percent of our entire population. And last year we saw, as I said, 12,000 people unduplicated. So you do the math. Lots of people. I know that every week I talk to and see and help and assist hundreds of seniors. This is, like I said, going on my sixth year there, and I don't regret it in the least. All the people that you have helped change their normal. My daughter and son-in-law were over yesterday to visit at the house. We were talking, and she said, what's on your bucket list, Dad? I said, nothing. I'd like to go to Disneyland. Really? Uh, Yeah, but I really don't have anything on my bucket list. I am living my bucket list because I love helping people. It just makes me happy. It makes me proud. It gives me purpose. That's why I work from 4.30 in the morning till 4.30 at night. You do. Every time I get up early at 5 a.m., mm-hmm. you've already been going for a yeah. long time. It's so special. And I do understand the way that that affects you because my biggest thrill is making somebody feel special mm-hmm. at some point during the day. Do you like flash mobs? Yes. Flash mobs always make me cry. Always. And I'm thinking about it this morning. And I was thinking, why do they make me cry? What is it about them? And I thought, it's the spontaneous joy unexpectedly brought into somebody's life. And it's the fact that a bunch of people got together with that same goal. Yeah. I mean, how much joy that brings to other people. And the whole purpose is just to surprise somebody with a wonderful gift. Unexpected. You know, that motivates me. That's why I don't have any bucket list left. Every day is a new adventure. I don't plan too far in advance. (laughs) Aren't we supposed to concentrate on today? Yeah. Because what's the saying? Yesterday is history. Tomorrow's still a mystery. That's why they call it the present. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. I might have gotten that messed up. No, no, that's a good version. Well, that's the way we're supposed to live. Don Miller, we've already asked about what we can do to help you. With HopeLink, we talk about donations. I know after I saw your Facebook, I couldn't wait to get on and just do a little something to help. Are there volunteer opportunities? What other kinds of help are you looking for with Hope Link of Southern Nevada? We do have some volunteer opportunities. A lot of them are associated with our senior food delivery program, which happens the last Monday and the last Thursday of every month in the morning. So if any of our listeners out there are looking to donate some time and would like to do that, it's a meaningful thing. You get to show up at one of the 17 different locations and pass out food to the seniors. It's not heavy lifting or long driving or anything like that. It's making relationship with the seniors and then determining in your conversation with them if they have any particular needs and then referring them back to us so we can follow up with those. But we have those all the time. And there's a volunteer registration form on our linktohope.org website. It's actually linktohope.org backslash volunteer hyphen form. You'll find it if you look. But that would be one thing to do. And you've got volunteer opportunities. And the biggest one that we need is, of course, for that ongoing senior food program. There are always other opportunities for volunteering in terms of different programs or projects. I'm already planning for Hope Week in the fall, which is a big event, which will culminate with a bowling tournament on the 9th of November. Those are the giving things. The biggest giving thing right now that we have going on is, of course, our back to school. 100 yeah. bucks for a student. 100 bucks a student. All of it. Yeah. In past years, we have equipped seven to 800 students. Last year, the 
number was smaller, but this year we're going to expand it further. And we've got a number of institutions that are helping us. The Crossing Christian Church is doing a big, big drive. A lot of other smaller places do smaller drives and give to the program, but we're always looking just for individual sponsors who want to put 100 bucks down and know that that's going to go to take care of everything a kid's going to need to get to school who wouldn't be able to afford it otherwise. You want to make a difference in a kid's life, that it's a great way to do yep. it. And you do all of these different services, Don Miller, with Hope Link of Southern Nevada with 11 employees. That has always amazed me. But you know what? When you look at the quality of the people that work with us, I'm not surprised at all. Any other kind of business who are doing all these things with just that small of a staff, it would make me wonder how well you're doing. But I know we're doing extremely well with a number of different populations, with a number of different services, and we're being recognized for it. People have contacted us saying, we want to give you large sums to be able to put towards this program or this program or to establish this or to build out this. So we're entertaining a lot of those things. But we're always looking for person wallet donors who want to support us in a very small small way. We're always very thankful. All the info will be on our Talking Solutions Facebook page with links and also the podcast of our discussion Mm -hmm. today. Don Miller from Hope Link of Southern Nevada. Am I forgetting anything? Probably. Then you have to come back. (laughs) That's my reason. I am proud to call you my friend. And you And always proud of the work that you do for others in our community. And I thank you so much for joining us again today on Talking Solutions. Thank you, Terry. And thank you to all the guests out there.